Hello, an honor to be here with a friend and colleague, Rabbi Mark Gittler, who among uh, his many talents and experiences is currently serving in, as uh, the director of content for 929 English, a fascinating project we're going to learn about engaging Tanakh in, uh, uh, in America and beyond. So Rabbi Gittler, it's just to start, um, Jews talk a lot about Talmud, learning Talmud and reading books and the like, all, all very valuable things. Why should Jews learn Tanakh? That's an excellent question. And um, Jews should certainly learn Talmud 100%. And I think that it's essential that we learn the Tanakh. We certainly spend a lot of time learning Torah. We read the five books of Moses each year, every year, over and over again. But there's that Nun and there's that Chet, the Nevi'im and the Ketuvim, some of which many Jews have familiarity with. We know the book, the story of Esther. We know perhaps the story of Ruth. We know about Jonah being thrown into the sea and smatterings here and there about Elijah the prophet and others. But there are hundreds of fascinating stories about the heroes of our time. There are hundreds of wonderfully interesting, fascinating um, speeches and messages and lessons from prophets and from people of all different backgrounds. And I think that one thing that's essential is the Talmud is a book that includes both Agadita, which we can define as, let's say, religious, spiritual messages, and mostly Halakha, the details, the legal minutia. Tanakh, when we study it, is about morals and ethics. And at the center of what the Tanakh is about, whether we start with it not working in the Garden of Eden and God choosing Abraham is about building a moral and just society. So we know that that's what Isaiah is speaking about and Jeremiah, the later prophets and Micah. But even before that, that is the hope is that Jerusalem and Israel will become this. So if we want our lives not to just be about the halachic minutia and details, which are important as an Orthodox rabbi and as a Jew to speak about, but we also want to think about larger questions of justice and the way that God talks to the people when he feels that, or when she feels that, the world is not, uh, the Jewish community is not acting properly, those messages are in the Tanakh. That's where those messages are. When David goes astray, when Solomon, who builds the temple in Jerusalem, all of a sudden is building idols for every for all of his wives in Jerusalem. When all of these stories <coughs> are coming to us from there, and those are are, are essential books for a Jew to study. Hmm, hmm. Fascinating. And so, why do you think um, we haven't engaged that more into our curricula? Why do you think so many Jews uh, ha have not mastered a, a literacy of Tanakh? That's a good question. Um, I will say that the rabbinical school that yeah. we went to right. does try to yeah. place more of a of um, more of an emphasis on Tanakh. I think that for whatever reason, the curricula of yeshivas classically yeah. in Europe was studying of Talmud, right. that it was good for sharpening and it was good for training of the mind. And almost j sadly, in the world in which men were the ones who got an education, women's the ones who, who didn't, mm -hmm. the Nevi'im and the Ketuvim was given for women to mm -hmm. study. And, <coughs> you know, hopefully that made many great women scholars, but, but um, these are books that are essential for an understanding of how to build a Jewish moral society. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that I can give you, a, you know, an exact reason yeah. other than it's sort of the continuation of the education that was yeah. um, in Europe, uh, but um, mm -hmm. that is essential right. for us. Right. It also seems to me as those who, um, who uh, live in Israel that um, the scriptures come alive again because of the locations and th the power of sovereignty that comes with building a, building a just society. So, so, so let me ask you. So um, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll say that, yeah. that, you know, based upon that, there are a number of people I yeah. study in, in Chavurot, in groups yeah. with, we study Tanakh together. Yeah. And when they go on a trip to Israel then, if they've studied the book yeah. of Samuel with me and then they go to Shiloh where they've yeah. studied about King David and they go yeah. to Jerusalem yeah. and they go to see where yeah. Ir David yeah. was or where these people and the places are, it, it can be life-changing, or they go to the caves yeah. where Saul was chasing after David. So yeah. we do have a disadvantage of not having, not being yeah. in those spaces, in those places, mm -hmm. but it's not so hard to get to Israel right. these days, yes. and right. the possibility of walking in the footsteps mm 
of those characters is certainly there. Great. So what is 929 English doing now to help to make this possible? So what 929 is, is 929 is a project that started in Israel. And then after, um, when they were completing their first cycle last summer, in the middle of July of 2018, a group of us brought it to the English-speaking world, mostly to North America. And what we have is we have five days a week, a daily, I say to people, it's like a daily daf yomi for Tanakh. The difference is if Daf Yomi, in all due respect to the amazing Alana Kershan or the people in Israel are having a huge, at Binyane Ha'uma in Jerusalem, having a huge women's Daf Yomi, Daf Yomi is mostly a bunch of men uh, in the basement in Brooklyn or something of that sort. And God bless them, nothing against it. But our project is meant specifically to be for everybody. Hmm. And so we have on our site and our all the people that we partner with are not just Jews of a certain stream, but Jews from any stream, any walk of life, anything. That's we want everybody who's possible studying the Tanakh. That's part of the reason that I was drawn to this project. You know, there's an idea that Jewish priests are not allowed to go into a cemetery. And, and why is that? Oh, they can't become tummy. They can't become ritually impure. But so what if they can't become ritually impure? What's important about that? So one of your teachers and my teachers, Rabbi Saul Berman, has this wonderful idea where he says, the Egyptian priests would go and they had the secrets of death. And because they had the yeah. secrets of death, the secrets of the afterlife, where you had to place your canoe, where you had to be buried, they had a position of yeah. power that could not be toppled. And they gained an incredible amount of wealth. Perhaps only the Catholic Church during the Middle Ages had a greater power of, of wealth. And so he says... Torah has to be just the opposite. The priest had specific secret knowledge, and Torah is for anyone, and Torah is for everybody. And so we have a website that anybody can go on to. It has a podcast or two a day. It has a video or two a day. It has, you know, and those are from people from Orthodox backgrounds and Reform backgrounds and Reconstructionist backgrounds. And it has, we have a series of articles, 400 words here and this, and we have the chapter spoken to in Hebrew and spoken to in English. So really the ability, the, if you can sit in front of your computer or while you're driving your car and put on your Bluetooth, you can listen to a chapter or two chapters, different commentaries, different thoughts about it in the privacy of your home in a way that could be five minutes. There's a daily email, you get three or four articles a day, 15 minutes, whatever it is, you're done. And over three and a half years, you can study the entirety of the Tanakh in that way. So we're trying to bring it to your living room mm -hmm. for you to study in the way that you want. These are the people I like to read. These are the people I like to listen to. This is the mm -hmm. way I want to do it. I want to read the chapter. Gegas and Tehet. Torah is for everybody to study, to be challenged, to learn. And we're just trying to be a vehicle to bring that to different people. Mm, love it. We should learn more Torah. Not only because it's about our self-refinement and our uh, vodas Hashem, our ability to connect with our Creator, but because it is an opportunity to uh, meditate on the construction of the just society, as Rabbi Gittler said. And so 929 English is a wonderful resource for us all to check out and figure out how we're going to tap into more Tanakh in the coming years. Thank you so much, Rabbi Mark Gittler.